anchor locker is where we store fenders. Got a hose for washdown. Anchor counter is attached to the windlass. Uh, works really good for single handing the boat. The uh, anchor pulpit has been extended to accommodate the bulb. The bulb is bow in the front and it's put together with a really effective swivel. This is a fallover device and it causes the anchor to come up and not need to be managed in order to come into the cradle. Works first time, works every time. The boat has adequate walkways on both sides. Uh, wide body boats are desirable for some people, but I'm more of a trawler guy. I like to have access front and rear, and it makes the boat easy to manage for my wife and I. This is the uh, starboard aft control station. It has a bow thruster controls. They're Glen Denning electronic controls. And we have a port station also with really good visibility to the front of the boat and the back of the boat. Very effective for maneuvering in tight places. The swim platform and access to the hydraulic lift deck uh, is uh, very convenient. We can load the boat with a transistor controller. We can launch the boat and bring it back without uh, any strain. Power is initiated by starting the lift deck there. This is a special built tender. Uh, it's a T-top, it's a solar system on top, keeps the batteries charged. It's got an outboard motor and it is painted to match the boat. There is a utility station here with a washdown hose, internet connection for hardwire, hose connection. The boat's equipped with an auto fill system, so all you have to do is plug it in and turn the water on and it keeps the, keeps the fill full. Easy access uh, from the swim platform. This brings us to the lower portion of the boat with the uh, aft stateroom and lazarette and easy access for engine service. This is a uh, two position electric grill. Works pretty good for grilling. This is a bar sink. This is a custom made table that uh, really suits this space well. Uh, we can get 10 people up here. And when we do that, we frequently will roll the table out and use this as a serving center. The table is very rigid. It's got no bend and no twist. It's got a built in stainless steel torque tube underneath it which makes the um, very, very nice engraved teak table, which has very little strength, strong enough to do the job without a leg. The roof is a custom-made roof that uh, really does a good job of keeping the sun off uh, our guests. A key feature of this boat is the pilot house, the raised pilot house. It's secure, it's enclosed. When it's windy and raining, it's nice. It's air conditioned, has a large screen TV. It has a computer workstation with a standalone computer for email and other parts of the ship. The table has got a Utility tray underneath it where we keep all our transformers and all the bits and pieces so that we can have our laptop on here if somebody else wants to do something. Um, there's audio visual equipment there. And a file cabinet with all the ship's records. So I've got everything right from the first day. Got a deck refrigerator. Don't have to run downstairs when you need a drink. Most of the computerized equipment that runs the boat is in this lower deck. The boat is equipped with a Maritron data collection system and logging arrangement. So there are 
numerous screens that can be accessed. This is the engine screen with all the uh, relatively uh, important equipment dealing with engines. Here's the nav lights. These lights actually show when I turn the nav lights on and they will indicate if a bulb is burned out. This is the command page where many different pages are available. This is for um, uh, navigation. This is for my bilge pump. So each bilge pump will show how many uh, minutes it's run and how many times it's gone on and off. So every pump in the boat is monitored. Water pressure is demonstrated. Wastewater tank is on this screen. Here's a tank screen that shows our, our tanks. This is fuel management. It shows how much fuel we have, how much fuel has been used, and how much distance is remaining, and how much fuel is remaining, calculated to the minute. This is AC power management, so it shows what I have on system two and system one, and it shows the generator in the middle, what it's running. So this is a heading indicator with pitch and roll demonstrated from the uh, ship's uh, gyro compass. This is also uh, displayed on this screen right here, along with conventional uh, ST60 gauges. The center screen is uh, showing Noble Tech. So Noble Tech is a um, PC program. This is Noble Tech Professional. It uh, is what I have been using for many years that I have a lot of confidence in. And this is what drives the autopilot and the Noble Tech radar with many different features. Also on board is the generator control panel, but also the Delta T um, blower system, which manages the blowers in the engine room automatically. A lot of people that are truly trawler folks will appreciate having a tank tender which uses air pressure to measure uh, fuel quantity, uh, water tank, waste tank. This is a traditional chart cabinet. Uh, not that we use paper charts a lot anymore but it's still important to have a paper chart now and then. This is where you keep them. And I have a mouse pad built in so I can run the boat from here without really moving very far from the chair. Realistically, if you're out to sea, heading for the Bahamas or, or points north or south, uh, there are very few days that you really want to be outside when you're out to sea. It's either too windy, it's too hot, it's too cold, or it's too rainy. Being inside with a bit of air conditioning is the way you want to be. On this boat, I added a lot of custom features so my wife and I could comfortably go on long cruise trips. And we stay up here. If we run all night, we, we stay up here all night. So we've got a bookcase where we keep some of our charts and important books. I redid the air conditioning with uh, better outlets so it wouldn't blow on the person sitting at this station. Coming in from port side, this is the master and the VIP down the stairs. That's the stairs up to the bridge. And this is the electric control panel. It switches the systems from shore power to generator. And it's got a generator start and stop station, so you don't have to go to the bridge to manage the generator. Very convenient for single-handed a boat. Forward is the main electrical for AC power. This top is for a built-in trace inverter. Uh, we have 4,000 watts available. We can run most of our systems uh, quiet with the generator off most of the time. This is the AC panel. It's well built and well thought out. We spend a lot of time, we live on this boat for long periods of time, so we put extra shelving in. I added an air conditioning duct. We have a fan that helps keep the galley cool. 
We've built spice racks in throughout, a knife rack that's custom, preserves counter space. We have another device that helps us keep those small things that you need. The galley again is, is very hot, so we've put a special fan connected to the refrigerator that takes the heat out the side of the boat so we don't build heat up in the galley. Again, we've tried to make every little space count because we live here. This is a nice little feature which gives us access to key parameters within the boat without going up on the bridge. We can see our tankage, we can see what time it is, we can see how the batteries are doing, and we can actually turn on the air conditioners or turn them off, the water heater and the deck lights without going outside or going to the main controls. This vessel is equipped with a very workable galley settee, fundamentally because the bridge and all of its uh, equipment is on the bridge in an enclosed pilot house. There's no station on the lower portion, which allows us to have a much larger settee. We can get six people here, and it's well equipped with storage for dishes with pegs, plenty of storage space. It's got a radio, got a TV set, and an operable window to get some cross draft. Down the stairs from the galley, the bow of the boat has the VIP. This is the VIP um, head. It's exceptionally large, well appointed, a black glass ceiling, large shower, really well done for the VIP on this size boat. Moving into the master stateroom, it's uh, full width. It has a uh, head shower forward. It has a uh, makeup counter built in. It has conventional air conditioning and a secondary air conditioner that can be used when you're running quiet at night it's a very small air conditioner. This keeps this cabin just cool enough on battery power. There's plenty of closet space. Many of them are cedar closets. This is a screen that uh, gives you a chance to see the position of the boat and the data collection if you choose at night or just to watch your anchor monitor. This is the audio visual equipment. It's uh, well concealed, but it allows a good size flat panel display for the master cabin without displaying itself when you don't need it. This is also equipped with Wi-Fi. Again, plenty of closet space, shoe racks, laundry, Horizon did a fabulous job building the carved cove throughout the vessel uh, out of exotic uh, wood. It's held up exceptionally well and it sure catches everyone's attention. Another custom feature that makes the boat really an at-home boat is the bidet that um, I retrofitted into the boat to make it like home. The salon is just big enough. It's got teak and holly floors. It's got a mirror that makes the space appear to be a bit larger. It's got a very handy uh, glass storage case. It's got built-in speakers for surround sound. It's got a large 250 watt woofer built into the seat. It's got a pop-up 42 inch TV. It's got a well-equipped audio system with infrared controls throughout the boat and a custom liquor storage cabinet that can ride through rough seas and a small beverage refrigerator here on deck. So moving aft down the stairs is the guest crew cabin the engine room access from above, the crew head, lazarette, 
washing machine and access to the swim platform. This is the way you go. Coming down the stairs, access to the engine room. And access to the twin crew quarter or guest cabin. This is the aft head with the shower. If you choose to enter from the aft deck swim platform, we can get into the lazarette and into the crew cabin and engine room. This is the laundry, washer dryer. This is the ship's hardware store, if you will. So I've got all the spare parts and all the bits and pieces that we need to keep everything ship shape. These are a lot of the things you need to operate the ship independently. Got a vise, got lots of projects underway, got a lot of storage. From here, it's an easy path to the engine room. The engine room was equipped with two um, really large for this size boat, th two 3412 Caterpillar engines with about 2100 hours on each. Um, the engines have been freshwater flushed after every use through this system of valves. So it, they have never been stored with seawater in them. The heat exchangers are original, have never been torn down and never needed to be torn down. The engines run at 185 degrees all the time. There's an extra large Baldor alternator built into this engine with a Baldor voltage regulator, which means we could run the boat when we're out to sea without the generator running. We make enough electricity to run all the ship systems including the, um, the AC systems with just this oversized alternator. We've got fishing racks built in above the engines. Got a water maker that's built in here custom so it doesn't take much space. Got two water pumps, 24 volt and 110 volt. And we have NIAD stabilizers which are placed in those two corners. There's a central vac system built into the boat, which is located over there, as well as a Fireboy clean agent fire extinguishing system, a hydraulic bow thruster with a forward mounted hydraulic pump for both the anchor windlass and the bow thruster. Okay, the engines are equipped with particle separators and uh, continuous flow oil filters to keep the oil cleaner and take advantage of 500 hour oil change intervals. The engines have been charged with rust inhibitors, Cortec rust inhibitors since new and there's no sign of any rust if you do close inspections on the engine internals. This is a um, Veritron fuel flow uh, transducer. So this monitors the outbound fuel, this monitors the inbound fuel, and we actually count every ounce of fuel that goes in and out of the engine for accurate fuel ratings. Underwater exhausts for many engines are a source of trouble. So the underwater exhausts have been rebuilt with new spray nozzles and new insulation and all new ducting here in the past four years. These are the Marathon data collection units that keep track of all the ship systems, including fuel flow, temperature. There's good access to all corners of the boat, even the far corners. We've got a freshwater hose for washing the boat. We've got a suction pump for sucking all the water out of the nooks and crannies and keeping the boat clean and dry. It's very easy to give this boat an engine room wash wipe it down and clean it up in a couple of hours. 